want you to start from the beginning. One late afternoon, a mysterious woman, who introduces herself as Dr. Reed Rosemary, visits the villa of the old notary, Richard Felton, whom suffers from a strange disease. He is assisted by his personal nurse, Gloria Ashman. After a brief and fruitless conversation, Reed is exposed as an imposter. She has come to the villa to find out what really happened to Felton's missing adopted daughter, Celeste. After being thrown out and refusing to give up, Reed hides until nightfall and sneaks back into the villa to search for clues. As Reed explores the villa, she soon finds herself in the center of her worst nightmare. Richard Felton has killed his wife, Ariana Gallo, and has lost his sanity. Upon learning that Reed has infiltrated the villa, Felton and a mysterious red nun begin hunting Reed. Reed eventually reaches the attic, where a mysterious girl who claims to be called Jennifer is found looming in the shadows. Reed eventually discovers that Richard Felton and the Jennifer in the attic are actually the same person. Richard Felton was born as a woman, but was then forced by her cruel father to live as a man. Phenoxyl, a drug created by Felton, the Ashmans and Professor Wyman on the Rosagallo farms, was created from a rare breed of parasitic moths to repress and erase traumatic memories. It is revealed that the drug was tested on Felton and the nuns of the nearby convent. The drug caused terrible side effects, hallucinations, severe light sensitivity, and homicidal rage. As Reed was escaping Jennifer, Gloria returns to the villa and offers to help Reed. Gloria drugs Reed, and upon wakening, she finds Gloria forcing Felton to cut out his own tongue and burn himself to death. Gloria reveals that she is the Red Nun, the sole survivor of the fire at the convent, which was started to cover up the phenoxyl experiments. Gloria had been hypnotizing Felton for revenge. After a frantic confrontation, Reed manages to escape Gloria's murderous rage. Just before Gloria passes, she reveals that Celeste is still alive and that she had fled the Felton Villa years ago. Reed must continue her search for unanswered questions. If Gloria was the daughter of Felton's associates, the Ashmans, why was she used as a guinea pig for experiments in the convent? Who were the Feltons protecting their daughter from? What happened to Celeste Felton? and constant churning over it. Forget about it forever. It's finally possible with Phenoxyl. Monsters. Fucking monsters. You can't erase memories forever. It would be like erasing time itself. Memories and time go hand in hand. The consequences would be even more devastating than Alzheimer's disease. There would be no separation between pre- and post-trauma. The memories would wander autonomously in search for answers. For a common ground. Fractured by spells of amnesia, hallucinations, and emotional swings. Two opposing perceptions would coexist overlapping and threatening one another, to the detriment of the one truth, now shattered, the so-called porcelain memory.
I won't open my mouth. I'll keep everything to myself. All this time, these people kept these experiments synthesizing this parasite. The moths that were carried out on the nuns at the plantation a secret, making them intentionally ill as if they were lab rats? Just for this drug? The phenoxyl. The farm, the moths. The hypnosis. And all those deep and dark family secrets. Family secrets are very dangerous. The most dangerous of any kind. The only way to survive was burying them so far down inside ourselves. And to move on. Richard Felton, Ariana Gallo, Professor Wyman, the Ashman sons, Stefano and Gloria Ashman. They all made a choice. And so did I. So you chose to forget. For 49 years, I left a part of me behind at that time. I did everything they asked of me. Forget. But one day, that missing puzzle piece resurfaced, like dirt stuck beneath your fingernails. It is there and always has been. Sometimes it is a song, a lullaby, or a certain item. But for me, that missing puzzle piece was a special person. A lonely one, just like me. Yes. Hello? Who is this? Ashman? Mr. Ashman, good. The girl is here. Shall I let her in? Go on. Sit down. You know why you're here, young lady, don't you? I am willing to turn a blind eye to the money and the cigarettes. Don't be fooled into thinking that I don't know about them. But for everything else, I refuse to do so! This is not a tourist resort, nor a playground. Breaking an entry? Larceny! What plans did you have for that gun? For God's sake, Jennifer, tell me! I don't know anymore. It seems you are a magnet for trouble. From what I'm reading, you caused a lot of hassle, especially at the Flemington Girls Institute. Other girls similar to you ended up straight in juvie. Did you know that? <sighs> All I can do is apologize. I can assure you I never intended... Young lady, what are you running away from? You are safe here. You can talk to me about it. I'm serious! <sighs> Very well. We will have to talk about this again. Considering what has happened, I have made arrangements to give you new chores. You will help Eliza in the kitchen. But sir! You will do your best. I've always done my best here! I seriously doubt that. 
When you become of age, you will do as you wish and as you see fit. But until then, you are under my care and you will do as I say. Run along now. Oh, and by the way, Lindsay will no longer be a problem for you. What do you mean? She insisted that I send you elsewhere. Instead, I have organized to have her transferred to another facility. They will be coming to collect her next week. You may leave. The bathroom in room number 212 has to be cleaned. Oh, and don't forget that you'll be helping Elisa in the kitchen after lunch. Okay. You've really done it this time. Make sure that the two of you don't get him agitated after his parents' death. Mr. Ashman Jr. did everything by himself here. What happened to them? Dead, my dear. Like all those who grow old. And I'm sure the mourning sped up the process. Mourning? For the nearby convent. Have you seriously not heard of it? The convent just went up in flames one day. Even this building was partly damaged. A dozen nuns died in that fire. Mr. Ashman's sister, Gloria, being one of them. That's terrible. They had contracted some sort of disease. They practically went blind. They had gone mad. And that doctor, Wyman? Sure as hell didn't help them. Poor girl. She was locked up in there by her own parents. Why? Hi, Jen. Oh, Andrea. I'll start with room 213. Did Mr. Ashman have something to do with it? Shh! Lower your voice! You'll get us thrown out of here. It seems that Mr. Ashman had the bad habit of touching his little sister. Oh, God. Obviously... The parents didn't like this at all, so they sent him to a family relative in the north and his sister Gloria to the convent. If it were me, I would have done the opposite. For him, the arrangement only lasted a few months. For her instead? Well, that's another story entirely. He had always been mommy and daddy, sweetheart. Of knocking? <laughs> no way. It is so last year. Everything okay with Ashman? Of course. Fantastic. Never better. Everything is great. He got angry, didn't he? Why would you care, Lynn? Tell me. I was just asking. Asking what? It's none of your business. What are you talking about? You can't be upset with me forever. I'm trying not to be, but my arm keeps reminding me. I didn't mean to. It was only... an accident. Do you have any idea how guilty I feel? Then please, I feel so shit about it. I didn't want it to get to this point. I already know it all. Ashman told me everything. What are you talking about? You suggested to him that I be transferred elsewhere. Is that what you wanted? You're really a bitch sometimes. A bitch who let herself be fooled. But no, in the end, you withdrew yourself. You didn't want to get in trouble. I didn't want to get in trouble. Well said! 
You think they would have gotten away with it, right? Go away, Lin. Leave me alone. No! You're, you're going to let me speak. Go away! <sighs> Just please! Open the fucking door! The door! Fuck you, Lin! Fuck you! You were disloyal. I thought we knew each other, but I was wrong. <laughs> Go away. I beg you. <sighs> My God, I have to leave this place at once. My god, Jen, you look like hell today. I can't believe I'm still dragging around this lice-infested suitcase. I've had it since I was at the Flemington Institute. Hotel will reopen in late spring. Until then, I will only see the same ugly old faces. What does it mean? If this is a joke, I don't like it at all, Lynn. Room 213. Eliza said she would have taken care of it. I don't understand why it's locked. never been locked before.
is that tree for? Who are you talking to? I don't understand. There aren't any guests at the hotel. Who could have ordered a meal? What the hell does Acherontia mean? What the fuck? What the hell did they do to you? You know they used to call him Wyman once upon a time! <laughs> You're hurting me! It's part of all of us. Andrea, Good. what the hell is going on with you? Good. This is all so surreal. I just want to get away from this place! Bitch! <laughs> 